And early today, I spoke about the Malmo Forum and the issues that were raised there with Sweden's ambassador to Israel, Eric Ullenhag. Here's our conversation. Mr. Ambassador, maybe let's start by talking about the decision by Sweden to, first of all, just hold the Malmo Forum and to hold it specifically in that city. If we start with why we're holding it, it's because we need to promise ourselves to never forget. We're living in a time where we have fewer and fewer survivors from the Holocaust, and then we need to take action to manage uh, the right history. The Holocaust deniers can never win. Secondly, we need to take action to fulfill the, fulfill the promise of never again to fight all kind of anti-Semitism of today. Malmö is chosen out of two, two reasons. The first reason is that many Jewish people uh, that fled the Holocaust and were saved in Sweden came to Malmö uh, during, the, during the Second World War. The second reason is actually that Malmö is one of the cities in Sweden that has had the greatest challenges when it comes to anti-Semitism. And for us, it's also a strong message to have the conference in Malmö, the forum, and uh, together try to do what we can to fight anti-Semitism of today. So what specific goals are you hoping to achieve uh, with this forum? One day's forum will not to win the battle. But what we are doing is that we are gathering more than 40 countries and we are asking each country to come with pledges on what to do to both uh, commemorate the Holocaust but also how do we fight anti-Semitism of today. In Sweden's case, we are promising a new Holocaust Memorial Museum from next year. We are focusing even more on what we are doing in schools and education to fight anti-Semitism. And we also are taking action to promote Jewish life in Sweden. And it's going to be interesting when we sum up to see what other countries participating has been promising themselves. It's a little bit like a donor conference when it comes to develop, develop, development cooperation. Then we ask for money. This time we ask for the moral commitment to, to fight anti-Semitism and uh, to remember the Holocaust. Now, Mr. Ambassador, contemporary anti-Semitism, especially in Europe, seems to be taking two distinct forms. One is the more traditional anti-Semitism that we associate with the far right, uh, and that leads into Holocaust denial and prejudice against Jews. More recent is a kind of anti-Semitism that has bled over from uh, uh, either anti-Zionism or invective against Israel from more extreme elements in the Muslim community. Now, we've seen both in Sweden, especially the latter within Malmo, and that is a more of a new challenge for authorities to deal with. Talk about the challenge for a country like Sweden in dealing with that. You're totally correct. We have two challenges in Sweden and many other European countries. The, the first one is, uh, I don't like to use the term traditional, but in a way, right-wing anti-Semitism. You shouldn't uh, put that under the carpet. It's still a problem in Sweden, and we have anti-Semitic incidents and anti-Semitic attacks from neo-Nazis still in Sweden, and we need to fight it. But at the same time, we have anti-Semitism from people that have been coming from other countries to Sweden as ref refugees. And if you go back 15, 20 years in Sweden, I would say that we didn't really take that, uh, that kind of anti-Semitism serious enough. Uh, the majority of society in Sweden, I would say, was a little bit tilted in the way that we felt that if you come as a refugee to Sweden, uh, then you can't be a racist. Uh, but we do have a problem with anti-Semitism. From people, Swedish people with a background in countries where anti-Semitism is extremely common and also sometimes part of the, uh, of the public discourse. Uh, that for me, it doesn't really matter who, who, who is hating. Uh, the important thing is that uh, you need to take the anti-Semitism, no matter who the hater is, at the same level of, of uh, seriousness. Uh, but it has been a little bit a wake-up call, I would say, the last 15 years in Sweden. Uh, we, have been, we are better today, we are better prepared, we are doing more, uh, but we have much more to do still. Right. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I want to bring up the uh, definition of anti-Semitism by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, or IHRA, which actually developed out of what's been called the, what, the, what was called the Stockholm International Forum. And, you know, two of the uh, codiciles in that uh, declaration deal with Israel, 
uh, denying the Jewish people their right of self-determination by claiming the existence of the state of Israel as a racist endeavor is defined as anti-Semitism, and applying double standards by requiring of it a behavior not expected of any other democratic nation. I bring that up because uh, it's sometimes not easy for authorities and advocates of free, free speech to reconcile that with a, a loud criticism of Israel and its policies. And, and Sweden is a country where uh, there are elements and governments that have been very critical of Israel. So how do you, in your mind, does Sweden determine how the, that genuine criticism or legitimate criticism does not bleed over into the kind of anti-Semitism that the IR, IHRA defines as such? I don't think it's that complicated. Sweden is down behind the, uh, the whole definition of an example list. Of course, you should and could discuss and, and criticize all countries, in, inclu inclusive uh, Israel. And we sometimes, as good friends of Israel, have different opinions, be it the peace process, be it what's happening in the West Bank. Uh, but it's extremely important, I would say, that the IRA definition also touch upon this. Where do you go, where do you fall in the hole of being anti-Semitic? When you when you criticize Israel, and if you think about it, it's not super super complicated. For example, if you if you play on our collective responsibility for Swedish Jewish people for what's happening in Israel, then it's over the line because it's not discussion uh, discussing Israel's politics. Uh, if uh, which happened this spring, if a young girl in a school in Sweden. Uh, is attacked or harassed uh, because she is Jewish uh, in connection to the to the fights with with Gaza. Then it's anti-Semitic. I think one of the great values of the era definition actually is that you touch upon it this because we know or in Sweden and all around Europe that many of the most severe anti-Semitic incidents have also been connected to people trying to hide between criticism of Israel. Uh, Sweden will continue to discuss uh, policies of Israel, but it's not hard, if you think about it, to do it without uh, falling in the hole of being anti-Semitic. And uh, I think that's a value of the IRA definition, that you actually touch upon this a slightly more complicated questions, but super important if you should meet anti-Semitism of today. Right. And now, of course, we've seen recent reports showing a rise throughout Europe of, uh, of anti-Semitism in the different manifestations uh, that we've seen. Sweden has a kind of unique perspective. As you mentioned, its role during the Holocaust as a haven, as a, as a neutral ground and a refuge for Israel. Talk about that perspective, seeing what is going on across Europe from the point of a Swede. I think we have had that debate in Sweden for some years now. We had in all the fightings with Gaza, all the uprising with Gaza over the years, last 15 years, we have had problems with anti-Semitic incidents also in Sweden. And trying to be crystal clear, if you be a politician or, as for me, representing the Swedish government as ambassador, or maybe even more important, if you, be a if you are a teacher in a Swedish classroom and the debate is coming up and people are crossing the line and starting to get, become anti-Semites anti anti uh, or have anti-Semitic statements, you need to give the teachers the tools to take this discussion. Fine, you could disagree, uh, and you should disagree, because you have different backgrounds when it comes to this conflict, but you should also agree that we could never accept any anti-Semitic uh, uh, language or harassment of, of students in schools. And that's also part of what we're trying to do when we focus more on education, uh, more of educating Swedish teachers, in this, in, uh, because they are taking the first uh, first discussion in, 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 in especially Swedish schools.